This is a replica of the Fugitive Predator Biomask Helmet, appearing in the 2018 movie. A very nice piece produced in hard resin. The paint detail is great and came complete with Predator Signature Dreadlocks painted in a drab black. The only thing missing at the time of purchase was the triple point targeting laser that you see here. With this video, I want to provide a quick overview of how to install these lights. You'll be surprised at how easy and cheap this project really is. The install consisted of three basic components. A lighted round rocker toggle switch installed at the back of the helmet, a 9 volt battery clip connector to use as a power source, and three red ultra bright LED lights with a built in resistor. The three component wires were soldered together with the resulting wire harness being tucked within the interior of the helmet. To make things easier for my LED projects, I built a simple bread box with a small wooden board and brass tacks to test the connections. The tacks have no electrical conductivity and are just used to hold the wires in place. This simple bread box comes in handy for future reference and to test the polarity of LED light leads. Here's a general nomenclature and description for the components, but there will be more detail in the video description. It is important to note that the most practical power source for this project is a 9 volt battery, and you will be likely using 12 volt LEDs. In multiple projects, I haven't encountered a problem using a 9 volt battery, and the brightness of the LEDs is really good. To install the rocker toggle switch, I drilled three holes into the back of the helmet. Then I carefully carved out the hole using a saw drill bit. These types of bits are good for cutting irregular holes in a variety of materials. The LED lights were then threaded through the existing holes and hot glue was applied to secure them in place. I used a pair of tweezers to remove the excess glue. Here I'm pre-soldering the wires that are going to be connected. This is also called pinning that will create tight ends without fraying or stray wires. This will make it a lot easier to connect. LED wires can be difficult to strip and expose the wires because they are very thin and fragile. If you carefully use an open flame from a candle or a lighter, the wire coating can easily be removed. For soldering the connections, it is highly recommended that you use a pair of helping hands. It's a little device that consists of alligator clips mounted on articulating joints. This will make it easy to hold your connections together when you solder the wires. If you'll be using heat shrink tubing for the soldered connections, make sure to slip them into position prior to soldering. You can also use electrical tape. Use a heat gun to cause the tubing to shrink, but be careful to protect your project from the heat. You can use a piece of cardboard as a heat barrier as seen here. If you don't have a heat gun, you may be able to use a hair dryer on a high setting. It's not recommended to use an open flame or a torch to shrink the tubing, but you can always use electrical tape as an alternative. For this project, the wire harness fit real neat in the back of the helmet, with a 9 volt battery sitting snug in a natural void at the base of the dreadlocks. Options to secure the harness include hot glue, velcro, and ties. The same technique can be used to enhance costume props and helmets, such as this Halo Master Chief resin helmet that was purchased without the lights. And produce impressive props for advanced cosplay projects, such as this full Guardian of the Galaxy Star Lord costume, complete with lighted boot rockets, built for less than $20. Depending on the interest from likes and subscribers for this video, the next video will feature the full build of the Star Lord costume. From painting the hard to find red and blue elemental blaster 
to making custom pants, holster, and rebuilding the boots. 